Hey, welcome back to my channel, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. I just want to tell you guys, if you're watching my video, I really appreciate everybody tapping in with me. So let's go ahead and get into this. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And please hit the notification button so you can be notified first when we drop another hot one. Is this man actually Elvis? At the age of 42, the world lost an icon. But even though many people believe that he faked his own death for protection against the Mafia, there hasn't been any conclusive proof until now. Well, you see, recently a man who was a psychiatric patient claimed to be Elvis. Of course, no one believed him. And eventually the therapist who was attending to him told him to go take a DNA test, if you really are Elvis. However, after the test results gone back, not only did Jesse's DNA match up to Elvis's DNA, but to both sides of his parents as well. According to historical records, Elvis actually had an identical twin that wasn't as healthy. And interestingly enough, his name was Jesse Garen Presley. Is it possible that upon Jesse's death, the bodies were swamped and the real Elvis assumed the role of Jesse? Even though you can watch the full video by clicking on the link in the description below, many people are asking the question. Hey, with the DNA matching Elvis Presley, that's interesting right there. I'm gonna have to look more into that. Here's ABC's Kana Whitworth. Behold, Palessi. We built a fake luxury store in Los Angeles and filled it with Payless shoes. The guests at our grand opening party had no idea. Guests invited to check out what looked like a luxury shoe shop. They're elegant, sophisticated. I just think it's so classy. And I could tell it was made with high quality material. A $35 shoe going for $645, an 1800% markup. Store owners sat on their heels as fashion influencers emptied their wallets. I would pay 400, 500, yeah. People are going to be like, oh, where'd you get those? Those are amazing. Then they're let in on the prank. These are actually from Payless. You've got to be kidding me. Shut up. Are you serious? Oh yeah, there you go. Those were Payless shoes. That was a good one. Hey, it's like what they say, what you don't know won't hurt you. A zombie apocalypse is about to happen. Scientists have successfully reanimated a 48,500 year old zombie virus that was found frozen in Siberia. You see, the reason why they did that was to study how it works. But when they did that, they realized that there was at least 13 other viruses of similar nature that were being trapped in the permafrost. Experts warn that with the increasing warming of the earth, it's only a matter of time before these viruses are released into the atmosphere, or worse, weaponized for destructive purposes. With the power struggle in our day and age, is it really far out to believe that? Man, there ain't no future for us. Don't look like it. It's either true or not. But uh, I think I'm gonna stop watching some of this stuff because it's got my mind mind blown. Was this man really from the future? Back in 2003, a man named Andrew Carlson had an insane run in the stock market that raised a few eyebrows. Well, you see, this man performed 126 stock trades and turned $800 into $350 million in just two weeks without losing a single trade. Well, as you can probably guess, the FBI showed up and arrested him for probable cause with regards to insider trading. However, what was interesting was that when he was interrogated, he simply claimed to be from the year 2256, almost 250 years in the future. The authorities were puzzled but soon realized that there was no records of his existence from before December 2002. Three months before the arrest, he was later put in a holding cell for the night, but the next day, he vanished without a trace. So... Man, why y'all scare this man out of Earth? It's like the casinos. When you win money, they say there's a glitch in the machine. I've heard so many stories about stuff like that. Let that poor man get his money. Y'all just need to mind your business. There is something living within the surface of Mars. On May 8th, this image was posted on NASA's website, revealing that there could be a lot more hiding on Mars than we initially thought. Well, you see, the photo revealed a strange man-made looking doorway. And even though the Mars rovers have combed this area many times, this was the first time the doorway had appeared and was documented. Some believe that this was a base created long ago when humans still inhabited Mars, before a nuclear war devastated the planet. While others believe that there is actually an intelligent alien civilization, living Living within the surface of Mars, even though both theories are vastly different, one thing that everyone agrees on is that. Man, we can't be the only people living in this world. There's got to be aliens up there in Mars, for real. You can't be small-minded.
This World Trade Center deal was super sketchy. Well, you see, just two months before 9-11, the World Trade Center was taken private by a man named Larry Silverstein, who ate breakfast on the 91st floor of the North Tower every morning except the day of the tragedy, citing an emergency hospital appointment. What's more fascinating is that he also took out an insurance plan on the entire building that just so happened to cover terrorism. When the dust settled, Larry was awarded a total of 4.5 billion dollars. And even though it can't be proven that this could have been the largest insurance fraud in history, everyone's saying that. Larry, where you at? You got some explaining to do. That was an inside job and you know you had something to do with that. Nah, but for real, a lot of people think 9-11 was an inside job. Seriously. You know, from the evidence that they got from firefighters, some policemen, a lot of people. Not just me, not just conspiracy theories. A lot of people really believe that stuff was the inside job. <laughs> Man, you gotta have some big cojones do something like that. I definitely won't be doing nothing crazy like that, but I, I'll watch it though, that's entertaining. Our government has been working with aliens all this time. There is a conspiracy theory called the Serpo Alien Exchange Program that suggests that the elites have been in contact with the aliens for a really long time. Well, you see, according to this theory in the 1940s, a UFO crash in New Mexico led to the government recovering a living extraterrestrial that came from the planet Serpo, located in the Zeta Reticuli star system, some 39 light years away. This extraterrestrial known as the Ebens started facilitating contact between Earth and Serpo, teaching humans about their technology, including their light speed propulsion technology, basing themselves in New Mexico, a place where the UFO sightings might not just be a hoax anymore. It was also alleged that 12 humans were actually sent to live in Serpo among the Ebens for decades. And while the actual purpose of it is still unknown, the question we should be asking is, how much more do we not know if we didn't know that? If anybody knows about the Alien Serpo Exchange Program, get on the comments and let me know what you know about that. That's interesting. This video captured the moment popular Mexican musician Chalino Sanchez knew he was going to die because written on this piece of paper was his death warrant signed by the very men who were about to take his life that night. A note that was given to him by an audience member while Chalino was taking song requests. A message warning him that if he were to continue performing, it would be his last show. You can even see it in Chilino's eyes, perhaps because he knew that whoever handed him that note meant what they said. But one thing is for certain, Chilino definitely knew that this was most likely the last night he was going to be alive. And sure enough, the next day after this video was recorded, Chilino's body was found in the middle of a field, blindfolded with rope marks on his wrists and with two shots to the back of his head. Which begs to question, who wanted him dead? Why did they take his life? And why didn't Chilino Sanchez stop his show if he knew for a fact that it was going to cost him his life? To this day, it's still a mystery as to why exactly Chilino Sanchez was executed point blank that night. Whatever it was, one thing is for sure. The story of Chilino Sanchez will continue to live on. Man, Chalino Sanchez will always be a legend in my books. That mofo has some good music. Even to this day, I'll jam out to his music. A lot of people do. If you don't know who he is, look him up. He's got some good corrido music, if that's what you're into. If you're not, still check it out. Chalino Sanchez, he got some bangers. It's conspiracy theories. The moon landing fake. It is stated that the moon landing never happened and it was only staged in a movie studio. The Americans seemingly just wanted to get ahead of Russia. Even the main participant, Buzz Aldrin, stated that it was fake. What was the scariest moment of the journey? Scariest? It didn't happen. It could have been scary. I know that man got a lot of people mad by saying that. Reviewing it every day and say to yourself, it's not over until I Man, did you see the size of that eyeball? I got to go to Las Vegas and go check that out one of these days. Yes, go. 
Oh my that was god. A lot of swing. Bro. Man, humans are getting so advanced nowadays. You see that dude right there? That's a ninja. Is the Earth actually just a simulation? There is a theory that humans are actually way more advanced beings, living in higher dimensional worlds, and that the Earth is actually a training ground, being used to prepare us for the impending disaster in the real world. It says that once the training is completed, we will pass on from this world and join the fight for humanity. Even though there are many examples of us living in a simulation, and you can watch the full video by clicking on the link in the description below. Why is no one asking the question? Why is nobody asking those questions? This is my first time watching this. Good stuff though. This is one of the best videos that I've came across on TikTok. Understand that this is not made up. Everything that she's saying is what's really going on. The best way to gain control of the most intelligent, powerful species on the planet would be to completely divide them from the love within themselves. As soon as they are old enough to begin creating an understanding of who they are, force them into a system that teaches them that it is wrong to be yourself if yourself is different from what is accepted as normal. Confuse them about their own biological makeup so that they think that permanently altering their body is the answer to happiness. Require their daily attendance at an institution that makes them focus only on the information that is provided. Make them attend that institution from age 5 until an adult and repeatedly test them on the information so that it becomes their truth. Give them an explanation to everything so that they never have a chance to make their own assumptions of the world. Scold them and humiliate them if they suggest an opinion that opposes that of their authoritatives. Keep reminding them of how cruel their ancestors were to each other in the past and broadcast how cruel they are to each other in the present. Only show them tragedies on the news so that they live in fear and think the worst of one another. Convince them that their species used to be that of an incognizant wild animal. Make them think that their very existence is so incredibly random that they lack purpose and struggle to make sense of a creator. Tell them that their kind is as smart as they've ever been so that they don't question the integrity of the system that they're in. Provide them idols with artificial beauty and use them as examples of what it is to look perfect so that they are never content with their own appearance and can't help but to compare themselves amongst each other. Create addictive digital platforms that rank them by numbers so that they base their self-worth off of the amount of followers that they have and are never satisfied man whoever wrote that's got to be a narcissist state of mind right there you need to be slapped that's not how you treat us humans what's wrong with you did you see this video out of california where this indian gentleman is threatening a latino contractor to work for free and if he doesn't to ruin his business listen to this i always work with my clients and right here just because I'm telling him that he's giving me more work and I'm not letting myself, he's going to call the cops. He's telling me to leave his property. He's telling me to pick up his shit. Legally, by the state of California, if he hasn't paid, this is my this is my material. I see videos like this all the time, and I wish I wouldn't get to this point because everybody knows me. All the people that follow me know me that I'm not like this. And I've been nothing to good, nothing, nothing but good to that man. And I've been listening to working with him, but just because I don't let myself... Get abused? It sucks. So apparently, Robbie Sagar and his wife, Seema Sagar, they do this very frequently. This is the sixth time that they've had an altercation with a contractor and then dismissed them without paying him. There's people in the comments saying that this happened to them and that they were never paid and the family kept their tools. This is horrible. He's stealing these people's labor and thinking he can get away with it. So let's make this video go viral to make sure that other contractors don't work with this guy and to make sure that people in his neighborhood of Rancho Cucamanga knows exactly what he's doing. I'm sorry this happened to this construction worker and to anybody who's ever worked with this guy and I hope you get justice for this. Man, why are they trying to do my raza dirty like that? What's wrong with y'all? Trying to take food off their plates? They got a family to take care of. What's wrong with you people? We eat watermelon every day. Here's what will happen to your body. First, say goodbye to thirst. Watermelon is made up of 90% water. Eating a piece of watermelon is equivalent to drinking deliciously refreshing water. And guess what? It's light on calories, but packed with nutrients like vitamins A, C, and potassium. Watermelon will boost your immune system and heal your skin with its revitalizing nutrients. If you want to lose weight, watermelon is just the thing. Thanks to its fiber content, it will fill you up without weighing down your stomach. Ideal for when you're feeling hungry throughout the day. But that's not all. Watermelon is also a remarkable enhancer for your muscles. It contains citrulline, an amino acid that helps boost your physical performance and improve your vascular health. And if you need to relax after a stressful day, watermelon can once again help you. It contains magnesium, an essential mineral for calming your nerves, curing your headaches, and giving you better sleep at night. Looks like I'm going to have to start eating more watermelon so I can get rid of some of this weight. 
According to the rumor, one week after reports of Jackson's death, a mysterious newcomer moved into a small bungalow near Ontario's Lake Door. According to a neighbor, a fleet of moving vans and a limousine pulled up in front of the property where a pale middle-aged male was escorted into the house, surrounded by what appeared to be three bodyguards. Census records list Alain Pontifex as the owner of the home. He has never been seen in public. A small live-in staff attends to his needs. When locals ask questions about Pontifex, the answer given by household employees is always the same. Mr. Pontifex is a very private person. A former contractor hired to do outside work around the cottage said, I never met Mr. Pontifex, but I did hear his voice once or twice. It did sound like Michael Jackson's voice, said the anonymous worker. I can't swear that it was Jackson, but I got the feeling it was some famous person who wanted to hide out, and I think I heard something about them building a recording studio inside the house. Town officials offer no comment except to say that they respect the wishes of all members of the community. A few Jackson Truthers have attempted to visit the cottage, but have been stopped by private security. They've been saying Michael Jackson's been alive for a long time already. Honestly, I think he's passed on. 145 top secret facilities that you know about. Well, you know, everyone talks about Area 51. That's an old one. A more state-of-the-art one is actually in the Dugway Proving Grounds, which is in Utah. I'm going to put a picture up of it right yeah. now. That's a big one in Dugway. It's underground, goes out. It's about 1,300 square miles. What's in there? All this stuff. Technologies, the craft, operations. So what happened is that when he got to the site, there was about a six by six pod and they pulled it up on the ship. Uh, and it wasn't the whole craft. The whole craft had gone down, but apparently there was some sort of one molded thing. And there were four, I'm gonna use his language, little men that looked like the color of a Sicilian, but 39 inches tall, no hair, and also no external ears, no, no pinna, flaps, very fine featured. But he, the reason he contacted me, and this is why this is so funny, you know, I've debriefed a thousand, over a thousand men like this. He said, I can't figure out how they got in and out of their uniforms. So they had a one-piece uniform. Now, no zipper and no buttons and no visible way they could get them out of this thing. And he says, how do they put them on? Mm hmm Well, he always got some good stuff about aliens. For the purpose of sterilization and, and population control, there's too many people on the planet we need to get rid of. In the words of Bill Gates, at least three billion people need to die. So we'll just start off in Africa We'll start doing our research there, and we'll elimin eliminate most, most of the Africans because they're deplorable. They're worthless. They're not part of this world economy. So they have their rights taken away, and they're suppressed, and they're experimented. Yeah, well, well, this, this is, these are but, not my words. These are Bill Gates' words. Yeah, yeah. Just, just uh, Google B Bill Gates and depopulization and sterilization. You'll, yeah. you'll hear out of his own mouth the plan. Yeah. And then if, if that's not enough for you, then listen to uh, uh, Henry, Henry Kissinger in his words yeah. where he talks about how this is a win-win situation and the mandation and mandating vaccines is part of the plan for depopulation. There's a lot of people waking up on Bill Gates now. For everything he said, there was a video that went viral about a month ago. It was him driving somewhere like in a city and there's a bunch of people throwing rocks and hitting his car window. He smashed on out of there, but yeah, it's good that he's finally being held accountable for what he said. Man, hey, Grandma wasn't messing around. There's Karens out there. We got to come up with a name for her. That's Triple OG Grandma. She ain't messing around. She gave him a warning. She could have lit the fuse and boom, gone they would have been. But she gave him another chance. Don't be trying to run up on anybody you think you can run up on. 
Vatican doesn't want you to know about this time device. In 2002, a book was released by a man named Francois Brun that revealed that time travel may already be possible. Well, you see, he claimed that in the 1950s, 12 world-renowned scientists actually cracked the code on time travel with the ability of harnessing electromagnetic sound waves that had been emitted in the past. He went on to show further proof with a photograph of Jesus' actual crucifixion. However, when questioned about the whereabouts of the device, he mentioned that the Vatican came in and confiscated it, and denying that anything of the sort ever existed. Interestingly enough, in 1988, the Vatican passed a law stating that anyone caught in possession of a device with time travel capabilities will be excommunicated. If the chronovisor was not real, then why was a law such as this passed? Even though you can watch the full video by clicking on the link in the description below, what is the Vatican afraid of, and is it true? that looks like he was on to something good but the vatican put a lock on it oh but actually english and computer code are just two different kinds of language so oh, this is a real example gpt find me a security vulnerability then write code to exploit it so here's what i put into gpt describe any vulnerabilities you may find in the following code i paste in some code from an email server uh, and then write a Perl script to exploit them and very quickly it broke me the working code to exploit that security vulnerability. So if you have the code to the Wi-Fi router and you wanted to exploit it and then do it, you get the idea. These things can compound on each other. New technology, really out in the last three months, um, lets you listen to just three seconds of somebody's voice and then continue speaking. You, you can't tell, right? And so, <laughs> how do we expect this to start rolling out into the world? Well, you could imagine um, someone calling up your kid, um, and getting a little bit of their voice, just, oh, sorry, I got the wrong number, then using your child's voice calling you and saying, hey, mom, hey, dad, forgot my social security number, I'm applying to a job, would, would you mind reminding me? Um, and actually, we were thinking about this as we wrote We're, we're seeing about this example conceptually, yeah. and then it turned out and then in the last week... Within a week, uh, it turned out other people figured it out, too, and started scamming people. Um, you, know, you have an example about, like, the locks of society. Yeah, think of it as I mean, anything that's authentication-based, um, you call your bank and I'm, I'm who I say I am, anything that depends on that verification model. It's as if all these locks that are locking all the doors in our society, we just unlocked all those locks. What nukes are to the physical world, AI is to the virtual and symbolic world. And what he meant by that was that everything human beings do runs on top of language which is, you know, you train these models on all of the internet, so it's seen many different languages, but then you only train them to answer questions in English. So it's learned how to answer questions in English, but you increase the model size, you increase the model size, and at some point, boom, it starts being able to do question and answers in Persian. No one knows why. Here's another example. So AI developing theory of mind. Theory of mind is the ability to, like, model what somebody else is thinking. It's what enables strategic thinking. Um, so. Uh, in 2018, uh, GPT had no theory of mind. In 2019, barely any theory of mind. Uh, in 2020, it starts to develop like, the strategy level of a four-year-old. By 2022, January, it's developed the strategy level of a seven-year-old. And by November of last year, it's developed almost the strategy level of a nine-year-old. Now, here's the really creepy thing. We only discovered that AI had grown this capability last month. And it'd been out for, what, two years? Two years, yeah. T, right now, um, it turns out it is better at doing research chemistry than many of the AIs that were specifically trained for doing research chemistry. So if you want to know how to go to Home Depot and from that create inert gas, turns out we just shipped that ability to over 100 million people. And we didn't know. It was also something that was just in the model, but people found out later after it was shipped that it had research-grade chemistry knowledge. And as we've talked to a number of AI researchers, what they tell us is that there is no way to know. We do not have the technology to know what else is in these models. So what happens when you have, for the very first time, non-humans being able to create persuasive narrative that ends up being like a zero-day vulnerability for the operating system of humanity? And what he said was, the last time we had non-humans creating persuasive narrative and myth was the advent of religion. That's the scale that he's thinking at. Man, I really like AI a lot, but when it gets in the hands of the wrong people, that's when you know we're in trouble. But hey, it's like anything else you do. But this one's a little serious. AI is more deeper than that. Shenzhou, China, October 2017.
In a rural community 120 miles from Beijing, residents make an extraordinary discovery in the local field. They find a 60-foot-long set of bones belonging to a highly unusual animal. The remains unearthed in Zhangjiakou had antlers, it had prominent claws, it had a long serpentine body. Wow. So this created a huge buzz and a lot of fascination. A video of the strange bones went viral on the internet and researchers were baffled as they attempted to identify the bizarre creature. But many local villagers insisted that the bones were the remains of a dragon. I mean, that looks good and all, but how did that just appear right there on the ground like nothing? Wake the fuck up, people. Conspiracy theories or anything, but check this out. So I saw this video. Did you see they just uh, did some weird law with house insurance in California? Yeah, they removed house insurance out there. State Farm is pulling out of that market. I kind of feel like um, some massive is going to happen. And not even two minutes later, this text message pops up. Pause to read. Like, no, wait a minute. Room. They already been telling us, bro. Pay attention. Stop sleeping on my videos. It's not just California. It's the whole goddamn world is going to shit. I met this guy in Yellowstone. This crazy guy, but he's been right about everything that's happened so far. And he said the government is building these ships, spaceships. I don't know what, but something. Ships? Yeah, places where we can be safe. He knows where they are. He's got a map. Stating what, right? I'm gonna show you. Look this map up. Why do y'all think that they're just letting people rob stores in California right now? Like, why do y'all think people have been escaping and building bunkers and shit like that? I mean, y'all see what it's saying? They been telling us, bro. Literally. I just need y'all to understand, y'all, that there's a reason why California been on the map lately, bro. With all this shit going on. I'm telling you. It's time for us to wake up. Hmm. That's a trip. I really hope it don't go down like that in our future for the sake of my family, your family, our loved ones, our futures. Hmm. La Tienda de Mario. So in 2020, right, there was this guy who uploaded on Facebook that he was opening a, a piñata store in Guadalajara, Mexico. It would start off nice, but then it started getting weird when the workers started reporting stuff being moved. They're getting thrown. We hear voices in the back room. He ends up putting cameras in the store because he's like, yo, I'm done with it. And the cameras, you literally see the piñatas move by themselves he starts posting all the shit on facebook and then uh, a chaman reaches out to him like yo i can help you out let me like clean your spot so he goes he visits it and it was this one specific piñata a moana piñata and that's the one who that was cursed od so what he does is like he tells him put some candles and record it and then that started f moving it appeared the next morning in like the f bathroom that like, people didn't even want to come to the store workers didn't even want to work there but the, the scariest video that was captured throughout this whole bro is the one i'm about to show you this happened after he got rid of the pinata the chaman took it started getting more hectic and hectic and hectic he even made a replica of the pinata wasn't the same it got destroyed what am i supposed to be looking at you'll see it <laughs> the f and the next morning what he found was hair was that an actual person wow. bro nobody knows what the fuck that was there's no way there's no <laughs> way bro but there was like a bunch of fucking paranormal activity he ended up closing down the fucking store and how much paranormal activity was reported nobody even wanted wanted to go there man you see the face on that thing that was part alien part skeleton i'd probably have to get out of there quick but in reality i'd have to get it blessed because i have a business and i have to take care of it and that's my income but yeah definitely get that blessed and if it doesn't work keep getting it blessed Mysterious death comes just weeks after a string of other deaths involving doctors who also practiced alternative medicine. And these cases are now raising concern about the safety of other doctors. Dr. Bruce Hedendahl, Dr. Jeff Bradstreet, and Dr. Teresa Ann Sievers, all three alternative medicine specialists, 
all three found dead in the span of two weeks. Bradstreet's practice had been raided by the FDA days before his tragic death. Then there's Dr. Bruce Hedendahl of Boca Raton. He was found in his car, dead, on Father's Day. He hadn't been in a car accident. The car wasn't even running. Still no word yet on how he died. But the list doesn't stop there. Two more doctors have vanished since last Monday. Dr. Patrick Fitzpatrick of North Dakota and Dr. Jeffrey Whiteside from Wisconsin. It's possible that they could come for me because I'm very outspoken about it. But if you ever hear that something happened, that I died, I'm not depressed, I didn't commit suicide, I'm telling you right now that we need to stand up and fight. So just remember, if something happens to me, it's because I've been telling the truth and they don't want that truth to continue going out there because this is the sign of the times. All the stuff that is bad is going away and all the truths are coming to light. I was supposed to be interviewing Dr. Rashid Batar right now. And I literally just found out right now that he's not going to be on today's show um, because he is deceased. Because remember that love is the antidote to fear. Love is the opposite of fear. Man, doctor, no matter what happened to you, I appreciate you for telling us the truth and trying to get it out there so we can hear it. But no matter what, God's got your back. There's a special place for you in heaven. Unlike the people that did that to you, oh yeah, they're going to meet their maker one day. It's just a matter of time because we don't live forever. Oh, hey again. So you know when you like share stuff online and then you inevitably get comments of people calling you a crazy conspiracy theorist and it's not possible that the government could do such a thing and sometimes just in my leisure reading i like to read u.s patents don't you so if you just go to the deep state machine that we call google just look up u.s patent number six four seven zero two one four oh what do you know directed energy weapon targeted individual patents from the year 2000 pulsative manipulation of central nervous system Published in 2002, method and device for producing a desired brain state via magnetic waves. And this fun one from 2013 has four different assignees, controls brain state by placing engineered EMF patterns into the AC wiring of a building. And from 2014, induced desired brain state in person by adding waves into a music file. And from the year 2000, induces desired emotional state through an EMF, sleeplessness, sexual arousal. 2015 monitors vital signs of subject via remote application of radar waves, handheld. And then here's one from 2002. Remotely transmit intelligible subjective sound into targeted consciousness, voice to skull. Oh, and who's the original assignee? The United States Air Force. And so, would the U.S. deep state government use such patents on its people? No. If you think our government would do something like that to us, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know what you think. You know what's crazy? Mm. Cereal. We all know like cereal is bad for us. The sugar is terrible for us. It's just not a healthy diet. But that's the number one thing people eat for breakfast. Mm -hmm. John Harvey Kellogg, the creator of Kellogg cereal, he made his cereal to stop masturbation. What? <laughs> He specifically created Kellogg cereal to put ingredients that will lower the testosterone of boys because boys are masking oh. too much. Check this out. If you eat Kellogg cereal right now, it will lower your testosterone them. Say word. Yeah, it will actually lower your testosterone because they put chemicals in there to lower it. It was the whole plan all along. It was to stop boys from busting nuts and like being so horny and shit. You had a whole generation of kids eating cereal in the morning. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, Kellogg's Corn Flakes. We're all lowering our testosterone every single day eating Kellogg cereal. And you know what's fun too? This is a real study that they looked at full research of different generations. Mm, that was some good information right there. I wonder if they still do that. Chilean TikTok user Franco Vallejas claims that he has been experiencing shocking paranormal activity in his home. He says that he's seen unexplained shadows, had severe sleep paralysis, has actually been bitten on his back by an unseen force, and perhaps creepiest of all, he's captured the terrifying apparition of a girl wandering through his house at night. In a previous video, I featured several of Franco's creepy encounters with the alleged female ghost. After these scary encounters, Franco says that the paranormal entity has not left him alone and the supernatural activity in his home has only intensified. The spirit seems to toy with Franco, frequently turning on his bathroom shower and sink 
and causing his lights to flicker or malfunction. One night, when Franco is home alone, he notices that the light and stereo downstairs seem to mysteriously turn on by themselves. Se ha encendido la luz de abajo y está sola la casa. Voy a bajar. Then, on another night, things get downright terrifying. Se escucha mucho ruido en el primer piso. Did you see it? After hearing a voice, Franco goes back to his bedroom. As he pans his camera around the room, in one split second, a woman can be seen sitting on his bed. When he pans back just a second later, no one there. Franco didn't even notice the creepy apparition himself, but when he posted the video, his viewers pointed it out immediately. But is it a real ghost or just some very good special effects? Let me know what you think. Oh yeah, that's a real ghost right there. I got another video that I dropped of him. And uh, yeah, she got a crush on him. There's something wrong with that crazy ghost, but uh, he need to get rid of her. Since 2017, I've looked at people's blood. I, I kind of know what is supposed to be there, what it's supposed to look like. And, and what I'm finding lately has, has more things in it than it should. I can say is this is what I'm finding and then the first thing a client is going to say is what do we do about it and I don't have that answer and that's why I'm reaching out. My name is Kelly Bacher. I live in Campbellford, Ontario. I uh, am a live blood analyst. I'm a practitioner that just helps people analyze anomalies in the body and then we give like say a meal plan or a supplement regime to help them feel better. I had an influx of people that were like we really need this done because we're being told there's nothing wrong and they just knew there was something wrong. These things that I'm seeing, which I have sent video and still pictures, um, they're illuminated. They, they, they glow green and they self-assemble. And when they are morphed into whatever organism I'm looking at, they look crab-like or squid or like something they, it looks like tentacles segmented tentacles kind of like a spider but i never saw those things before never and then there's the metallic kind of looking pieces that will eventually degrade but turn into a living thing that i don't even know what it is if i shut my microscope off they go almost dormant and then when i turn it back on and the heat's up and the lights are on then you'll just they be were dead one minute and then you'll just ever so slightly see them move and then before you know it it's all a buzz again that's not normal when blood dies it dies these things aren't dying and it's scary when i first noticed it was like bubbles i don't know if you've ever seen mold spores develop like where there's like a few bubbles and then all of a sudden bloop, you, you see another one and you and they're kind of like growing at first that's what i saw and i do believe i sent that picture to you and they just kept bubbling but then it, it the smaller bubbles kind of connected causing a chain and then other chains joined it to make almost like a network 
it was, it was very bizarre. That was one of the anomalies. The other one was um, the metal fragments. Well, they look metal. I can't say they are. I can't conclude. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you guys so much for tapping in with your boy. Happy Thanksgiving. It's time to take care of my loved ones. They're waiting for me, so y'all have a blessed day. Take care, and like always, hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification button, too, so you can be the first one to get one of these bangers when we drop them. Now go ahead and share this on your platforms so we can get this message out there. Have a blessed one. Deuces.